Welcome to Tech Planet, and we are going to cover some of the most unusual and amazing machines out there. So let's begin the top 10 countdown. A weird backhoe can go into swamps, ponds, and even the ocean. And this particular machine is designed for digging, dredging, filling, and even mowing. So the backhoe pretty much digs holes underneath water. It's outfitted with pontoons and it sets rigs in a digging location, thus making it to be an extremely stable platform. The largest variant has a 60 foot reach, but smaller machines such as the 95 can be used for smaller projects as well. At number 9, the Hadrian X Brick Lane Robot. The first mobile block lane machine takes the fun out of building layered walls. Stem from a 3D CAD model, the machine converts wall sketches into block positions. A dynamic stabilizer continuously adjusts the position of the robot's gripper in a 3D space, so it can actually endure some bad weather. The Hadrian X can lay out 200 blocks an hour, but it doesn't seem to include the motor process, so I'm sure that would take a little bit longer. Moving on, or moving up as I should say, is the truck unloading lift. Now, you might know what this machine is if you drive a heavy hauler and it's pretty much one of the more efficient ways of unloading. These types of decks can tilt 45 degrees and eliminate labor costs via traditional methods. Obviously it's not for every type of product out there, so you're not going to be able to dump windows or anything out of it, and it's more suited for things like potatoes or vegetables. The weirdest thing about this whole contraption and this process is that the driver actually stays in the truck. Ironically, this increases the safety for the driver along with increasing efficiency, but the truck would definitely need to have a brake check before doing this process. A few of you old schoolers will know what this is, and it's called this electric typewriter. This strange innovation disrupted the business typewriter market in the 60s. With over 2800 parts, the machine was derived from a golf ball shaped head which replaced the conventional typewriters of that time. It eliminated jamming and increased the speed of the typewriter. The ball was also interchangeable so different fonts could be used. Eventually the second version was released in 1971 and then the third version in the 1980s. But eventually this industry was overshadowed by computers. A different kind of process is not well known by many people in the construction industry and it's called hydro demolition. Structures such as dams, parkades, or even bridges can undergo high stress. And in some cases concrete can be damaged, so renovations are needed. Hydro demolition is an excellent way to cut away at structures since it's highly accurate and there is no vibration, making it to be an improvement over typical jackhammering. These machines vary in size and can strip the concrete all the way down to the rebar. The bigger units are very impressive and they can provide up to 1000 bar pressure at 120 liters per minute. So you wouldn't want to stand in front of this thing. We reached the midway point and this is a double jet CNC machine. CNC machinery can range from 3 axis all the way to this machine which is considered a 12 axis goliath. And basically this means that these machines allow movement along the X, Y, and Z domain along with rotation, which pretty much means that it can move in almost every possible position. This company produces a few impressive variants, including the double jet, which can focus on woodwork. The table includes clamps, which are tiltable and adjustable, so they can hold parts without fixtures. The two arms can also correlate and work on the same piece, which is a very interesting software design. We are slowly getting into the rabbit hole, and the next position is the laser microjet. A unique type of machine combines a laser beam into a water jet. This laser beam is focused into the water jet nozzle, and the low pressure water actually guides the laser beam down into the focal point. This is otherwise known as internal reflection. Ultimately, this machine can cut 30 millimeter thick diamonds or drill up to 15 millimeter holes in super alloys. Precision can be refined down to 1.5 microns with a speed of 45 millimeters per minute. Overall, this machine can cut through pretty much anything, but it's more for smaller objects and things that require higher precision. At number 3, micro tunneling. You might have seen a TBM building the next highway or even service point underground. Micro tunneling works on a similar principle. Constructing tunnels approximately 0.5 to 4 meters in diameter, it's typically used for sewer or gas lines, so it bypasses the need for trenching in tight areas. Like a typical TPM, several blades chip away at the soil, 
and excavated material is transferred through the launch shaft. Hydraulic arms push the machine forward at roughly around 6 meters a day. It's definitely not as fast as a typical excavator, but this is typically used for something where you didn't want to disrupt the soil or even the surface. At number two, the molecular beam epitaxy, and I hope I pronounced that right because honestly, I did not know anything about this machine before. Now, this basically grows crystals layer by layer. You might use this machine to build a computer chip, a solar cell, or even a low temperature superconductor. It kind of works like an inkjet printer, but instead of colors, this machine fires atoms at a substrate. Otherwise known as thin film deposition, MBE is apparently good for building semiconductors out of multiple elements, but it only works at a few microns per hour, making it to be really slow and more suited for research applications. But this thing might actually be building metamaterials or even your next spaceship in the future. So if you follow the fusion race, and to be honest it's not much of a race right now, then you probably have heard about this particular machine from General Fusion. Sustained fusion has always been a tricky puzzle to solve, so this company has come up with a very unique design. Otherwise known as magnetized targeted fusion, plasma is injected into the vessel and high speed digital controls move pistons at different rates to drive shock waves into the core. This compresses the plasma and it should be able to create fusion, thus generating sustained power. Liquid metal would act as a shield to the neutrons and this could be a very viable power source. In my opinion, it's a little bit better than the tokamak design, but we'll just have to wait and see. So once again, thanks for watching, please like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.